stuck in the mud. And Psalm 42, he says, He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. But sometimes, even though God's done that, we still carry that burden, mm -hmm. that yoke of bondage. And today's message is yoke of bondage broken. Who likes to stay in bondage? Not me. But it's almost like we get so comfortable there that we, we don't know how to get out of it. We just carry this bondage and it weighs us down. And most of the times why we go around and stay in bondage is because of unforgiveness. And we, we get dragged down, and we can even drag down others. Today I'm going to read from Genesis 27, verses 30 through 40. And it's about Esau, Jacob and Esau were brothers. When two brothers are feuding, that's about the worst thing ever, I think, because... Um, we're supposed to be bonded together. But with brothers and sisters, or brothers and or sisters, when they're feuding, it just divides. And I think sometimes what I see in my own personal family, because I have eight siblings, my stepdad, we, when he passed away, we reala realized he was the glue to our family. And when he passed away, it's like, that we're so divided, and it's breaking my heart, and I'm praying that I'll be, use my boldness and, you know, say, you know, we need to get things straight. We need to make amends. Yes. So let's look up Genesis chapter 27. <laughs> Beginning at verse 30. It says, now what happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also had made savory, savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that his soul may be blessed. And his father Isaac said to him, who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him. And indeed, he shall be blessed. Then Esau heard the words of his father. He cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and was taken away, has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now, look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master. And all this, all his brethren, I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine, I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me. Me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live, and, by, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. A little background on what is happening. Isaac is growing old. You know, his hearing and his eyesight wasn't very good. 
And he calls for Esau, his oldest son, with instructions to get his weapons and go kill game and make him a savory stew in order that he can eat and receive his strength so that he could give um, Esau his blessing. Rebecca, Isaac's wife, overhears. I see her eavesdropping on the conversation and proceeded to take matters in her own hands. Now, don't we do that? God has spoken to us, and it doesn't happen instantly. So what do we do? We take matters in our own hands, and we try to make God's will happen. Chapter 25 states that Rebecca conceived, but the children struggled within her womb. So she inquired of God, and God said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Esau was born first, but Jacob had a hold of his brother's heel. So Rebekah knew it was God's will for the youngest one to be, have the blessing and be the head of the younger one. So rather than allowing God to do with his way, she stepped in. And because of that, two brothers feuded. I would encourage you to read all the chapters prior to 27. Um, probably begins in 25, 26, 27, 28, because it will all tie in together. Um, we have two brothers fighting for power. The Bible says that Rebecca loved Jacob, but Isaac loved Esau. So there again, mom and dad, it appears that they were kind of battling because um, I, I'm sure Isaac heard from God, but because of his love for his son, he wanted his blessing to be put on Esau. But I, it doesn't actually say it in the Bible, but I kind of would surmise that he knew deep down. If God had spoken this to Rebecca, that the older would serve the younger. I'm sure she told that to her husband. But nonetheless, we have two brothers feuding. Verses 30 and 31, I'll reread. Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from hunting, and he had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father rise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. Well, when Rebecca heard that, she went and called for her son Jacob and said, Jacob, go into the family and get a kid and bring it to me, and I will make savory stew, and then you take it to your father. And Jacob said, but we're different, you know. Isaac is hairy, and I'm smooth-skinned. So Rebecca said, go and fetch your brother's clothes. And then she took skins and put the skins on him to make him hairy and put his brother's clothes on him so he would smell like his brother. So when he came into his father, he asked, who are you? And he said, I am Esau, and he was actually Jacob. And he said, you have the voice of Jacob, but the smell of Esau. So then he gave the blessing to Jacob. Verse 32 and 33. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. And this is when Esau had come back. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? And as I was reading these scriptures and going back and forth, see, Isaac, uh, I'm sorry, Esau had to go and get a weapon. He had to go and kill the game, so he had to go hunting. And then he had to bring it back, dress it, prepare the stew for his father. While in the meantime, his mother was doing this work for Jacob. So Jacob didn't even have to work for this blessing. Mama did it for him. Do we do things for our kids that God says, 
let them fall. I'll pick them up. And mamas, we're always there to pick up the pieces. But sometimes God says, you know, it's not your place to pick up those pieces. And that's a hard place to be. That's a hard place to be for a mother. But sometimes we need to know that we hear clearly, and God says, you know, let go and let me do it. So as this is transforming, you can just see the rage in Esau. He became bitter. He hated his brother. He literally grew to hate his brother. Because prior to then, he was out working, uh, uh, hunting, and his, his, his brother was home, had made a stew, so evidently his brother knew that his brother Esau would come back hungry. So he came back and he said, feed me some of your stew, because I'm going to die. So Jacob said to him, give me your birthright, and I will give you of the stew. So what did Esau say? He said, well, I'm going to die anyway. Here, take the birthright. So he lost his birthright, and now he's lost the blessing. Then Isaac, in 33, then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him. And indeed, he shall be blessed. He shall be blessed. From the womb, God said, The oldest shall serve the younger. Rebecca probably went about Jake. Jake um, Rebecca probably went about Jacob getting the blessing the wrong way, but Isaac must have realized it was God's plan, but because he loved Esau best, he wanted Esau, Esau to receive that blessing. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O oh my father. But he said, your brother came in deceit, with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And yes, the brother came with deceit. But as I read back a few chapters, Rebecca told Jacob, she says, I will take this, this deceit. I will take this curse that will be placed on you. I will take it upon myself. So his mother's there again. We're willing to die for our kids. But sometimes God says, you know, just you, you're going to have to watch him fall. And as mothers, we don't want to do that. And as dads, too. You know, we try to live our kids' lives. And sometimes we just got to let go. Especially when they're grown up, they've left the nest, mm -hmm. they have a family of their own, they don't bring up their kids the way that you brought up yours. It's a different world today than it was 30, 40, even 10 years ago. So we need to learn that we hear from God and don't try to make God's will happen. From the womb, like I said, God said, the oldest shall serve the younger. And if Rebecca hadn't stepped in, I surmise that God would have, his plan would have come to pass. He probably didn't really need Rebecca's help, but she was willing to help anyway. Aren't we willing to help God? We're willing to help God. I don't know if we think that our way is better than God's. I think mostly we're just impatient, and we just don't want to wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And as we wait upon the Lord, we are restored. We're made new. Thirty, I believe I stopped at 34. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with exceedingly great and bitter cry and said, the blessed he also was. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and it has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, Is he not rightly called Jacob? For he has.
supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now, look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac and Esau both realized that Jacob, what Jacob had done. Isaac knew he could not take back the blessing that he had given to Jacob. Esau became very bitter. For this was the second time Jacob had been, something had been stolen from him, from his brother. And when family members feud, it's never pretty. It's never pretty. And by our standards, Esau had the right to hate his brother. We could justify it and say, but look at what my brother did to me, you know? How would we feel if we had a brother or sibling that stole things from us, stole our dignity? dignity? Maybe the parents gave them all the attention. They were always the favorite. Maybe we were not so favorable. Um, like I say, I came from a big family, and my youngest brother, the youngest of nine, so he's still the baby, and he's 50, almost 53, and he's still the baby. That's sad, because we didn't let him grow up. And he's had more problems, more issues in his life than the rest of eight of us together. And I think because one of us was always there, picking him up when he fell, um, part of it, my parents were divorced. I was married out of the house, but she still had four children left at home. And being the youngest, my father paid a lot of attention to, to my youngest brother. And he always resented the fact that he didn't get to work in the woods with my father. My father was a woodsman, and the oldest brother worked in the woods and hated it, literally hated it resents it to this very day. And my um, brother next to him, but he's younger than I am, he worked in the woods and he loved it. And then I had the brother next to him was kind of like Jacob. He was more weak. Um, he was more the, my mother's side of the family and my father hated him. Literally, he didn't really say it, but in his actions, he almost hated this child. And I think because he was not, he didn't have the heap of blood like the rest of us did. But Donald resented, he never got to work in the woods with his father. And he said, I always wanted to, and I, I didn't, I was not given the opportunity. So different family members, we have the same parents, the same siblings, but we become different people. And sometimes we categorize everybody in the same um, clump, and we're far from that. Jacob and Esau were totally different people. Jacob, uh, as I read, was more like his mother, and she loved him, and she wanted the best for him. She wanted him to get the blessing, and Esau was like his father. His father loved him because he did things that interest his father. So he wanted to give him the blessing. How do you bring that together? Verse 40. I'm going to go back to 39. Then Esau, his, Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, and he's speaking to Esau, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of the heaven from above. That tells me that he was going to have to work for everything that he could get. Yes, God blessed him, but he had to work hard. Nothing was handed to him. Not like Jacob. Everything was handed to Jacob. But not Esau. He had to work hard for everything he got. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. That's why we have a choice. We can choose to stay in bondage. We can choose to keep that yoke around our neck, 
or we can choose to let it go. Isaac, I don't know how long it took him to release that yoke, but he did. As you read on, he forgave his brother. His brother had to be sent away because Esau was going to kill him. And Rebecca actually lost her son. She never saw him again. Because when Jacob came back home, she had already passed away. She, she was, had died. So these brothers had to be separated. But that was also God's plan because he said, in your womb are two nations. Nations battle. Look at Israel. All the nations are coming against him, them. All the nations. You know, we have supported them, but not for long. We read that in prophecy, and we see that happening more and more, that America is taking their hands off from Jerusalem, off from God's people, because God says they will stand alone. And God blessed both of them. Jacob was blessed. And Esau also was blessed. But Esau had to work. He had to work for everything. He had to work for his blessing. Esau knew he would serve his brother. And when it came to the point of Jacob returning after many, many years, he broke his brother's yoke off from his neck. He had done that prior to his brother returning. Maybe one reason why he was gone so that Jacob was gone so long because it took that long for Esau to get rid of that yoke. How long does it take us to get rid of a yoke? Matthew eleven twenty nine it says, Jesus. These are Jesus' words. It says, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me." For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. And verse 30 says, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Is light. And I wrote this down this morning in Tracy's Sunday School class, because I loved it, and it kind of just went right along. We, what choice will we make? Will we hold on to that yoke around our neck? Oh, we break this yoke off of my neck. When I was a fairly new Christian, I used to work in the shoe shops, and um, I was a very shy, timid person. Um, a lot of stuff had happened, you know, like it does all of us growing up. So I had a chip on my shoulder, and God showed that to me. But actually, somebody had told me that I had a chip on my shoulder, and I took it to the Lord, and he showed me it did. That's like a yoke around our neck. And I knew that yoke needed to come off. Well, this one day, it was right after afternoon break, went back to my sewing machine, and the Lord showed me my whole life. And then he didn't go beyond what I could remember. You know, some people say they, they think they go dig on things they don't remember. It's dead, gone, and buried. But when God reveals things to you, is so that he can take them away, so that you can be healed. Well, God showed me from the very earliest stage of, that I could remember to that very present day. You know, this one hurt me, that one hurt me, this one hurt me, you know, right up from childhood through adulthood. And then God showed me that I had hurt someone. That broke my heart. And I asked God to forgive me. Because that's through what God had given me, I forgave these people. And I said, Lord, if I need to go to them, I need your strength to do that. And there was a couple that I knew that I didn't need to because they were very sick people. And sometimes you don't need to dig up um, Dirt. You don't have to open a can of worms. I knew in my heart I had forgiven. And I'll tell you, at the end of that day, a whole weight had lifted off my shoulders. And to this very day, I can think of those people and I can say, God, I pray that you save them, bless them, 
And if you give me the opportunity to go and share you with them, I pray that I'll be obedient to do that. It's no fun having that heavy yoke around your neck. It keeps you in bondage. It keeps you in bondage. You can stay there if you choose, but it's not God's will. It's God, not God's plan. Like Esau, he removed his brother's yoke from his neck. And by doing that, many years later when his brother came home, and Jacob was fearful. When God told Jacob to go home to his homeland, he was fearful. He had two armies, an army that went before him, ready to kill, to protect him. But when they came, they said, your brother is coming. His brother was watching for him to come home, just like the lost sheep. You know, Jesus said, I leave the 99 and go after that one. Just like the father that had the two sons, and one wanted his inheritance early, and he left and just spent it all, ended up sleeping and living with the pigs. And finally came to his senses and said, you know, if I could go home, I could be a servant to my father. But they eat better than I do. So when the lost son came home, where was the father? He went to the field every day looking for his son. Are we looking every day for those lost souls? I haven't been, but I desire. Let's stop looking for those souls. Last night at prayer meeting, Tracy had up on the screen light and darkness and heaven and hell. And you know, I've never had a vision of hell. It's like we talk about heaven, we need to. But do we really know the fiery hell? Do we really know in our spirit that these people are going to burn forever and ever and ever. I can't comprehend that. Maybe I need a revelation of what hell really is so that I'll have the compassion that Jesus had, that the disciples had, that missionaries have. We have missionaries that have given up everything. We have, we have members in this church that have given up everything to serve God. We sit in our comfortable little homes. You know, on the door it says, beyond is your mission field. We all have a mission. Are we willing to take off that yoke, that bondage, so that we are free to give of ourselves? One thing that happens with the yoke of bondage, it's like we just stay, stay suppressed. We just stay within ourselves we're not able to release ourselves because we don't like what's inside. I used to think, you know, my husband would say, you know, everybody likes you. I said, how can they? I didn't like myself. How can someone like me when I don't even like myself? Well, that's self-centeredness. But when Jesus comes into your life, when you get rid of that yoke of bondage, you see yourself in God's light, in God's love, and you can walk in that. Are you ready to release that yoke of bondage? Let's come. Father God, you've come to set the captives free. You have come to set us free. And I pray if there's anyone here with a yoke of bondage, whether light or heavy, that they would come to these altars and release it. They would release that yoke that has been just pounding them in the ground. God, you've set our feet upon a rock. You have established our ways. Let us walk in it. Your word says, this is the way, walking in it. Lord, your people desire to be set free. Set your people free. Just as you sent Moses to go to Egypt to take them out of bondage. It says, Set my people free. Father God, I pray that right here, right now, that you set your people free. No longer to be in bondage. No longer 
to be in bondage by anything, whether it's a person that they're in bondage to, a relationship, uh, uh, no matter what. Maybe it's possessions. Maybe God is saying, sell all that you have and give to the poor and come poor and come and follow me. Whatever it may be, Lord God, I pray that we be obedient. 